Okay. Hi, my name is uh, Likoko Yunis from Nairobi, Kenya, and uh, I work with a ministry called Full Circle Ministry, which is part of a church called Mamlaka Hill Chapel. And uh, we, the Full Circle is involved in the work of rehabilitation of commercial sex workers. And we have been doing this for the last uh, about five years. Uh, first had the vision and, and, and as a church just wanted to reach out to the red light district around us. And we didn't quite know what to do. And having been a part of the church prayer team and being passionate about prayer from a very early age, I just plugged in and I wanted to be part of the prayer team that prays for the team that goes to reach out to the commercial sex workers at night. And um, as I joined the prayer team and we did prayer walks across the street, uh, slowly by slowly God just started drawing me in into the world of uh, prostitution, the realities, the heartaches of the ladies. And I stopped praying for those people and started praying for the ladies. And what I didn't know is that God was working in my heart and, and, and bringing me to a place of wanting something to be done you know i just wanted something to be done like now and and i would go in and i would meet the ladies we would talk with them we would pray with them we would um with a friend of mine called alice and and a lady who from the church just came out to really spearhead the ministry called moeni and the three of us really <laughs> prayed a lot and 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 cried together and strategized and dreamt and really tried to put together something to work with as we went out to reach out to the commercial sex workers. But um, initially we thought we would actually evangelize, just reach out to them and share with them the love of Christ. But with time we realized that they have more needs than that. But the big reason why they're on the streets is financial. And um, of course you think then, oh, if that's a reason, then get a job and get out of the streets. But then we realize our other issues, like issues of addiction, substance addiction, addiction to the trade, and, and also a general lack of um, skilled training or education to help them secure another job. And so before long, we realized that this is going to be a bigger thing than we had envisioned. And, and so I like joking and saying many times, we, we actually started this journey of full circle ministry, rehabilitating commercial sex workers with a lot of foolishness and zeal and by God's grace, he has helped us to learn a lot. Um, I remember that one of those first meetings we had between the three of us and we would wonder, what exactly are we going to do? And we had no information because none of us had been a commercial sex worker. And we said one of the things we committed to do was to learn. And we have learned a lot. God has taught us. He has brought people our way who has, have been either involved or know a little about what to do with commercial sex workers. He's brought volunteers along our way. He's brought counselors. Our church, Mamlaka Hill Chapel, has been very supportive in terms of just uh, praying for us and, and giving us opportunity and giving towards the ministry, um, providing uh, finances for the ladies to go to school, capital for their businesses, uh, giving job opportunities where need be, and just coming to facilities, uh, act as trainers. And, and for me, it's been a, a, a sure confirmation of um, God's provision that he, he leads you into, he gives you a vision, he, he puts a burden in your heart, and as you walk in obedience, every time he provides, every day, um, many times the ladies come to us and they present a need, oh, I want to go back to school, I have this business plan, I want to start an idea, and we don't have um, resources, we don't have um, like money, stashed away but we always present it to God and God provides just in time and 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 so I I, I think maybe to sum it up I would say I thought first I didn't plan to be anywhere involved in prostitutes but God drew me in and turned my heart from a place of thinking oh those women who are loose and they don't care and how can they do that to a place of compassion and realizing that they really don't want to be there because all of them uh, say one thing, I, I actually ended up here because of poverty, because I had no option, you know, or no perceived option, uh, according to them at that time. And so I, I keep saying that God 
drew me in. I thought foolishly that as I went into full circle, um, I'm going to help. I, I have a background in social work and of course I thought, oh, I'm like, I'll do counseling and all those things. And yes, God has used those skills to do something, to make a difference, to bring an impact. But I think God has actually done more work in me than, okay, maybe he's done as much work in the girls, but I feel like he's done more work in me and I'm the one who's gained more. I have learned what it means to be a Christian. I have learned what it means to you know, love your neighbor as yourself. I'm learning what it means to, um, the mandate we have in Isaiah chapter 60, to break, uh, you know, the chains of the captive. I'm, I'm learning through the girls, through everyday experiences, I'm learning that. I'm learning about the fruits of the Spirit. When the Bible says, um, be kind, you know, show gentleness, have um, um, be joyful always. In this ministry, those things are tested. And yet God wants me to have those fruits and he wants them to be there all the time and he wants them to remain. He says, I want you to bear fruit, much fruit and fruit that will remain. And yet when I look at the fruits of the spirit, I'm like, Lord, in this ministry, they are tested every time. And, and I'm learning every day that this is God's work. He, he called me, he, he led me here. He has provided and I know he will continue to provide. I'm learning that he's a lord of the harvest he many times i think he's rebuked me and had to remind me you're not the messiah i am the messiah do you will not save them i will save them and and you think that we have i would have learned that by now but i have learned that um all i have to do is obey and god does the work he's the one who changes the bible says he's the one who saves us and keeps us from falling and if that is true for me then it's true for the ladies i have seen Ladies transformed. I have seen miracles of someone coming in, they're completely addicted and miraculously, God just removes that urge and desire for smoking and, and using drugs. And I've seen girls struggle, but eventually make it. I've seen ladies who come to us and they never go back to the street. I've seen some who come to us and, and they have a few relapses, but eventually they make it. I've seen some who come to us and they go back and, and, and of course it's heartbreaking to see you've invested so much and they go back. But through it all, God has continued to encourage me, you know, and, and help me de-link from um, being focused on, on wanting to control the outcome and just surrender to him. Surrender to him and allow him to be God allow him to do the work so that when the girls are transformed, I won't say, oh, it's because of my training, it's because of my experience, it's because of this, but it's because of what God has done. And so for me, Full Circle is um, a place where I'm, I'm, I have seen God. <laughs> I'm learning to see God as he is. I, a, a place where I have grown as a person and as a leader. A place where I have seen, I see, and I have seen miracles every day. Yeah. I mean, deliverance, people who come and they are possessed, you know, demon possessed, people who come and they're bound in one way or the other, families restored, you know. I have seen God reconciling people back to himself, saving these girls, giving them a sure salvation and helping them walk um, as, as Christians. And it's a joy. It's a joy for me to be part of this. It's a joy to to partner with Christ to do this. And so even as um, as 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 we continue in the work of ministry, my my prayer is that God will raise people to pray with us, to walk with us and support us and encourage us. And that's why I love ICAP, the meeting ICAP, because it's it's a forum for an encouraging space and a place where you meet partners, you know, counselors, you get to learn new ways of new th doing things. Uh, you get to learn from the mistakes of others and, 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 and not replicate them. And um, our, our prayer is that God will raise, uh, provide for us enough resources so that all the ladies, because one of my frustrations is every time we go out to recruit the ladies, we of course, meet many and about 10 or how many, you know, per night come on board. But we leave so many others. 
And part of the reason why we can't have all of them is because we don't have all the resources in terms of manpower, finances, and just capacity to take them in. And, and that's one of my prayers, is that, Lord, would you raise up others who would reach out to them? Lord, would you provide for us all these things that we need so that we may reach out to them? And, and 